This event is sponsored by Miro. Miro is the online whiteboard platform where product teams can work together effectively. If you don't know where to start, it's packed with over 50 templates for product teams. Whether you need a Kanban, mind map, retrospective, product roadmap, or user story map, we've got you covered. Try it for free. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Vivek Gandhi, and welcome to uh, this recorded webinar uh, about being an effective remote product manager. I love recorded webinars, by the way. Uh, if I happen to crack a silly joke and I don't hear anyone laughing, uh, I don't feel too bad, so, uh, so it's good. And then I don't have to answer any questions also. It's an added bonus. Uh, anyway, um, I am a product manager. I've been a product manager for several years myself. Just a brief intro about me. I uh, worked uh, till recently at a hedge fund uh, where I was building a next generation data platform. Uh, perhaps you could think of it as uh, an internal Google finance, if you will, where our investors could sort of go in and uh, query uh, economic data or market data of all kinds, uh, pull that up on a chart and analyze it. Uh, so it was a fun experience, been doing that about a year. Prior to that, I was at Google where I was uh, working uh, on Google Play. Uh, I worked on all of our push messaging systems, so notifications and emails at Google Play. Um, and a big part of my job was to figure out uh, what notifications are relevant to which people uh, and, and start using machine learning to do uh, that kind of uh, learning. Uh, if you ever got spammy emails from notifications, you do have me to thank for. Uh, so please feel free to uh, share any hate mails uh, if you, uh, I will share my uh, contact information at the end of this presentation. Um, all right, so we are here today uh, to talk about uh, remote PMing. And this is particularly important in uh, today's day and age. So uh, increasing number of companies are remote first today. You've probably heard of Facebook and Twitter uh, and uh, uh, you know, Slack, I think, uh, announced that they are going to start being remote first in light of the COVID crisis. Even prior to COVID, an increasing number of companies like AHA, for example, uh, were already remote first. But you don't have to work in a remote, in a remote first company uh, for this to be relevant. Uh, teams are also increasingly distributed geographically. Uh, so you might well be working with a team that is remote. In my case, uh, I uh, am out here in New York City, but a team I worked with uh, was in Kiev uh, in Ukraine. Uh, we have product management and engineering resources uh, uh, like in, that I directly worked with in my team uh, that were in a different country. So if you're in a situation like that, uh, you are going to need some of these tips and tricks um, to, to sort of help you do your job in a better way. And I'm going to postulate that remote PMing is a double-edged sword. Uh, just like many things in life, there are two sides to this coin. And I, um, I'd say that uh, a big part of becoming a good remote PM is to learn how to deal with the downsides while capitalizing on the upsides. So you have to learn how to use uh, this to your advantage. And remote being remote sort of impacts all aspects of a PM's work life, right? So think about strategy, product discovery, um, interviewing users, uh, sort of uh, figuring out your roadmap, prioritizing all the way into execution uh, and sort of getting things shipped. All aspects of your job are impacted by the whole uh, remote work situation uh, if you transition from in-office to remote. So let's start with uh, looking at what downsides there are, and then we'll move on to the upsides. I wanna focus the bulk of this discussion on downsides because that's sort of more meaty and uh, more important, I'd, I'd say. Uh, and then we'll sort of pivot towards upsides and how to sort of capitalize on them. The first big downside of uh, being in a remote situation 
is it's really easy to miscommunicate between teams, right? Uh, everyone's isolated. Uh, it's really easy to make assumptions. Now, if you're working in person, it's really easy to just turn your head around and start talking with your product manager. If you're a developer, just ask questions. Hey, Vivek, what did you mean when you said X, Y, Z in the PRD? Uh, can you elaborate on that? Uh, it does, it's not making sense. Uh, and when you're sort of remote, uh, suddenly just having to set up a Zoom meeting to go over that, uh, if, if you need that, uh, is, is there's just suddenly this barrier to sort of communication uh, that did not, did not exist in person. Uh, and because of that barrier to communication, it's easy to make assumptions for people. You could be making an assumption about something that's documented in the PRD, about a user need, and all of a sudden, uh, a wrong product gets built, for example. So how can you fight against that? Uh, well, for me, uh, what, what worked was doing sort of daily stand-ups with the team and communicating frequently was important. We also got very diligent about documenting uh, in PRDs. Uh, there's certainly in PRDs, as you know, a right level of documentation where you don't want to provide too many details and make a PRD very bulky. Um, or you don't want to sort of have too few details, but I sort of started documenting more in PRDs and making things more explicit over communicating just to make sure that everything is amply clear uh, because I did not want to take any risk with uh, under communicating or uh, people having to make assumptions. And I use PRDs and execution as an example, but the, but the general idea goes across the board of uh, PM duties. So um, it's particularly hard, for example, to do um, user research when you're in a remote situation. Uh, now, if you are working on building internal tools like I was, I was lucky uh, because my users were in my company. I could easily uh, Zoom chat with them. Um, and even if I did Zoom chats, even then shadowing, for example, was particularly hard. So uh, there are problems with that too. Uh, if you are in an enterprise SaaS company, for example, certainly you can reach out to your cons to your customers and do Zoom meetings as you probably would have done anyway uh, if you were in, uh, like, you know, working in office. However, uh, what if you're a consumer product company and what if your consumer product is, you know, available all around the world, like Google Play? Uh, previously, you could just travel to India or Indonesia and talk to users in person and understand their needs better. But now you're not going to be able to travel in these uh, situations. How are you going to figure out those user needs? So I'd say uh, you need to come up with a mitigation plan uh, on what you can do. It might be around how can you go about setting up user interviews remotely over Zoom with some of these users. It could be around, um, you know, how can you build better data and telemetry in your product, uh, more instrumentation that helps you understand how your product is being used more than you typically would. Um, so you need to come up with a strategy around how do we sort of break these barriers to communication and um, you know, not, not have to make any assumptions. One of my favorite parts about working in person was just the ability to brainstorm, just walk up to a whiteboard and start brainstorming with my team. That could be designers, could be developers. I certainly miss that a lot in uh, the whole remote working scenario. And uh, this is, hard uh, to solve because there's no great solution yet. Um, what I figured helped is uh, uh, setting up formal brainstorming sessions where the title of the meeting is just, let's brainstorm solutions to this problem. Uh, that can help. Um, try ad hoc Zoom calls. Now this is a little bit tricky uh, because what you could do when you're working in person is you could, when you have an idea, just turn around to the developer around you and say, hey, remember the solution we discussed to this problem? I have a different idea. Uh, let's start building on that. Let's start sort of brainstorming and figuring out where that idea leads us. Uh, and that was really easy to do in person. Um, now, like I say, you cannot turn around and sort of start talking to someone next to you uh, but can you just like, you know, if it's okay within your team, start doing ad hoc Zoom calls. Can you just directly Zoom call someone? Um, and my manager, uh, like, you know, he like, you know, said this beautifully when he was like, can we just treat an ad hoc Zoom call 
rather than an intrusion as someone's just turned around and stopped by your desk. Um, can you just talk, uh, treat that as an ad hoc conversation in office? Um, and certainly just like ad hoc conversations in office, you're gonna have boundaries. Uh, if someone might be working uh, or might be busy, et cetera, uh, you might wanna give them their own space. You don't wanna do it too often. Uh, and it's up to you to decide what the right level is. Uh, but in my team, we sort of got to an agreement where we are like, all right, ad hoc Zoom calls are okay. Uh, if I'm free, I will uh, respond and we can start having an instant conversation and break down that barrier uh, to communication and perhaps have better, better brainstorming with each other. Uh, there are sort of certainly tools available. Zoom has uh, a sort of a whiteboard uh, ability that can be helpful. Uh, it's, it's not great though, to be honest. Um, Jamboard or Miro are a little better. Miro is one of the sponsors for uh, this event, so please do check them out. Uh, but these tools are a little better. One of the challenges that I ran into are many of these tools. I mean, at the end of the day, you need a touch screen uh, to really be able to use this as a whiteboard because otherwise you're reliant on your mouse and having to draw with your mouse is such a pain. Um, uh, but yeah, if you have a touch screen, then some of these tools can be helpful and uh, help replicate the whole brainstorming process uh, remotely. The next thing I want to say, again, I think these next two problems are more rele are as relevant to just any professional, not just product managers, but it's important to call them out, uh, is that it's really easy to blur your boundaries when you're working remotely, right? What is uh, personal time versus what is work time? Um, people are, you know, dealing with kids at home and all kinds of things come up. Um, and it's really important to develop a routine and stick to it to deal with this. Um, as also, it's really important to show empathy for others you're working with who may have kids, um, who may have other situations that they may need to take care of. And um, it's important to, you know, give people that space. Um, in terms of a routine, just some ideas, what worked really well for me was to just step out for a run during lunches. Uh, I really found that extremely beneficial to go get some fresh air, get a bit of a change before I come back. I know for some of my colleagues, uh, I know one of them used to, like, you know, before they start working at 8 a.m., they'll just sort of step out for a walk, uh, for a 15 minute walk around the block, uh, and then just come back to their home, treating that as a commute uh, before they started working. Uh, and that just sort of helps you mentally shift um, from a personal time to a work time, you know, transition over to your work time. I know for other colleagues, just changing into more business casual clothing, even if they were going to be at home, was helpful. So figure out what works to you, works for you. Uh, try a few different things uh, and stick to it uh, in terms of drawing up those boundaries and developing a routine and a schedule. The other thing that uh, is important to remember is everybody's suffering from isolation in these times. And um, a PM's job uh, is particularly important, is dependent on uh, building relationships. Uh, you depend uh, to a very heavy percentage on uh, other people to get your job done. So go out of your way to build those relationships. Go out of your way to nurture those relationships. Uh, try having a virtual coffee, try having virtual lunches. Uh, those things that you would do in office, uh, just try and see how you can do them online uh, via Zoom. Um, that I think is pretty challenging. Uh, certainly, there'll be a time when you know COVID and pandemics won't be uh, as much of a problem anymore and people will start returning to offices. And even if you choose to be a remote PM after in a post-COVID scenario, uh, just like, you know, prioritize making those once in a while office visits, just seeing people in person, trying to build relationships, generally a very good idea for a remote PM to, uh, to sort of focus on this as much as they focus on their work. So at the end of the day, you're dependent on people to uh, get stuff out the door. All right, just talking about some of the upsides of remote work and how to capitalize on, on them. Certainly the big upside is not having to commute. And if you're someone like me who's commuted an hour each way for past uh, few years of my life, you'd certainly appreciate that. But beyond that, uh, the, other, the, the other great thing about remote working is you have plenty of uninterrupted time. 
um, you have time to do heads down work. Um, you have time to think and be creative. You're no longer as meetings driven or stuck in back to back meetings the entire day until you're drained out. And that's certainly a very welcome change. Um, and you know, you should, you should capitalize on it. You should capitalize on how you can be more creative and do more focused work um, as opposed to being as meeting driven as you were before. And then lastly, uh, you know, um, I feel like uh, the remote work scenario enforces some positive behaviors or good behaviors that product managers should have anyway. I mentioned uh, documenting diligently in PRDs, for example, or documenting, uh, you know, your user interviews, etc., uh, and becoming better at that. This is also something that, uh, you know, uh, will be helpful just generally. It's just like a better practice to be able to figure out how to work asynchronously. Uh, in, for example, our quarterly planning process, uh, we were extremely meetings driven where we would even have meetings to be able to, to define and articulate those quarterly objectives uh, or key results. And we visited that process and said, all right, we are not going to meet as often in this whole remote scenario for, for this next iteration of quarterly planning. What we're going to do is work asynchronously. So uh, Vivek, can you go do the definition and uh, articulation of these goals while, hey, tech lead, can you go and do uh, the sizing of these goals uh, independently. And then uh, once we have all worked asynchronously on each of our pieces, we'll just all come together once and, uh, you know, just review the whole thing uh, together uh, once. So, so like, you know, just review your workflows within your team and figure out what work can be done asynchronously uh, so that people um, can work on it independently, come back and collaborate when it's truly needed. Um, it's just like, you know, helps like save needless meetings and helps people figure out what uh, like, you know, work practices are best for them, right? So for example, you may have kids and you may not have as much time to spend meetings during the day, but you certainly have uh, ability to work asynchronously during evenings. You can like, you know, it, it gives people the flexibility to figure out what kind of a schedule works better for them. Um, so certainly a good idea to explore how you can be more asynchronous as a team. All right, that's, that's mostly it. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, talking to you uh, about some of these experiences that I've had working remotely. Uh, please feel free to reach out with any questions. And uh, you know, when this webinar goes live, I'll also be on chat. So please uh, do share any questions that you have on chat as well. Thank you.